Good morning, YouTube. Finally, another Flipper Zero video for all of you. After an entire year of backyard sciencing in the hands of maniac tech enthusiasts, we are getting some pretty nice, stable third-party hardwares for the Flipper Zero. One of those popular aftermarket accessories is a developer board. It utilizes the GPIO UART bridge on the Flipper to control a wide variety of hardware applications. The original Flipper Zero developer board has only an ESP32 chip. It gives the Flipper 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connectivity and was originally meant for OTA debugging. Not long after people managed to install on this very chip the Wi-Fi router, which is a set of software for wireless penetration testing. I remember when this was all the hype, but soon one chip became insufficient to quench the never-ending thirst for mayhem. Modifications on the factory developer board started to emerge, followed by completely homebrew third-party boards. Now there are boards on the markets that houses three, four, even five functionalities at the same time in slimmer, more stylish form factors. This mug right here is too stupid to be involved in any of those exciting things, but I have my own way to have fun. Behold, the ugly duckling of Omnisile, freak of artifice, bang of all of our existence. A 6-in-1 Flipper Zero Multi-Brick that has an ESP32 Marauder, a C1101, an NRF24 module, an infrared blaster, an oh my god plug, and an entire fucking Ponagotchi. The WAC RF is a little more than an abomination of random parts hastily crammed into a chunk of orcish creation. See. The Infrared Blaster, NRF24, C1101, and the ESP32 chips are connected to the flipper at the same time. Any of these modules can be accessed without switching or plugging anything. This is made possible by a breadboard, which allows me to connect multiple pins to the same socket, and a little bit of sorcery from some internet friends. You may have noticed that I'm using an existing Voyager board here. It handles the connection of the ESP chip and the C1101-NRF24 module. Normally, you could only use two at the same time, so either ESP plus C1101 or ESP plus the NRF. But like I said before, with a little bit of help from some nice genies, I was able to snake the NRF module right into the same loop. This is where the awesome Extreme firmware comes in. Extreme is a set of custom firmware for the Flipper Zero, where the users are given a lot of customizability and freedom to expand and modify. Under Extreme Protocol GPIO, you can choose extra pins for the C1101 module, which in turn allows you to use an NRF24 in conjunction with your C1101. Now all I have to do is to wire the NRF module like normal, with the exception of CSN pin going to port 7 instead of 4. The infrared blaster is a bit more straightforward, as you only need 3 of the 8 pins to make it work. Pin 1, 2, and 8. There is indeed one caveat. These ports will also pass data and power to the IR blaster when I use any of the other Wankara functions, making it operate a lot more than it need. A simple solution is to just unplug the fucker since it's right under my nose. Don't worry, it does not break the loop. Everything else still works fine with the IR unplugged. And that's about all there is to the WAC RF. Once I figured out the connections, it became a simple LEGO building game. All there is left is to arrange the parts so they fit within the compact shell. I've been doing this all my life. With the help of some double-sided foam and rubber band, I was able to come up with a pretty sturdy final product. The Ponagotchi 
could potentially connect to the flipper through either Bluetooth or GPIO, but I haven't been able to get either working. Fail. So I slap a display on there and run it as a standalone module for now. I would say it's quite fitting for the setup, despite not yet connected, given that I could SSH into the Pongachi and essentially use it as a portable Linux environment to conduct more complex scientific researches. The OMG plug, on the other hand, have much less to do with the WACRF setup. But come on, who doesn't like a wirelessly controlled Linux computer the size of a toenail? The last part of this video will be dedicated to the Rabbit Labs IR Blaster. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the nice quality of this part here. The edges of the boards are nicely cut in sand, clean solder drop, and straight components. I haven't really tested this in the wild because I have little to none interest in antagonizing Walmart employees, but no doubt this is a powerful device capable of a lot of things. Except destroying Alderaan. Yes, kind of look like you did. There you have it, the Flipper Zero six-in-one developer brick, the WACRF. I have a lot of fun building the thing over the past three weeks. It's been a pretty wild ride watching this emerge from just a blank slab of breadboard. Special thanks to the kind genies at Rabbit Labs and XFW. This would not happen without their generous help. Awesome support and products from both of them, unless you are extremely resistant to information. In that case, don't go there, or you're probably gonna regret.